Hi everyone, this is Phil Travis, and this announcement is for week five of the 60s. This week, we are looking at, we're going to start looking at the civil rights movement. And we'll be looking at this for a couple of weeks. So we'll be looking at the civil rights movement this week. We're reading from our main textbook, our Farber textbook. We're, we're, we're reading chapter four. And that's the only reading for this week. And the reason it's the only reading for this week is because have our project proposal due this week. So I have the project outlined in the syllabus, but I'll talk about it a little bit right now. In this class, you have a major project, okay? And you have an option. You can write a paper, and in that case, you know, look at the paper proposal. I'll have a paper proposal template that is in there for you. And you can, you, you select a number of sources that you think you're going to use, come up with a thesis statement, explain why the paper is significant, write a brief introduction, and submit that as a paper proposal. What's your topic? What's your thesis? Why is it significant? Write a little introduction and a list of sources. If you want to write the paper, the paper will be a five-page paper. And that's if you want to write a paper, and that's, and that's fine. Um, if you don't want to write a paper, if you think you have other creative sort of gifts, if you are excellent with like putting together, um, you know, a highlight music video reel, if you are good with, with, with music or art, um, these types of things, if you want to do your own presentation, you want to do a recorded lecture or something like this, these are all the types of projects you can do on a subject on the 60s that I'll accept as an alternative. And you can be creative. In your paper proposal, you need to explain to me what your project will be if you're not doing a paper. And you need to explain why that project matters, why is it okay for you to do it, in your opinion, and why you think it requires as much work as writing a paper would. So you need to explain what you're doing and why you're doing it and why I think I should why you think I should approve that paper that project as a substitute for a paper. So, you know, if you want, you don't have to, but if you want, you can do a project in this course that is a kind of creative alternative project, or you can do a project in this course that is a standard paper. In either case, you need to do a proposal for that. If you do a paper proposal, follow, as I mentioned before, follow the sort of standard protocol for a paper proposal. Subject, thesis statement, significance, argument or, or write an introduction, like a paragraph to introduction, a list of five sources. If you do the project, then you need to, a similar amount of, of time, you need to explain what the project is, why it's worth doing, why will it be related to the 60s, why is it a valid replacement for a paper, uh, what types of resources you will use, how will you construct this, these types of things. So this is the proposal for the project. It's due this week on Sunday. The uh, project itself will be due at the end of the term. So as a result of that, we're only reading the one chapter this week, and uh, it'll be on civil rights. So we'll have our discussion forum as always, so I'll see you in the discussion forum. Here's the factoid for this week. The factoid for this week is this. The Tuskegee Institute, during the, during the, the period prior to the, the, the success of the civil rights um, movement, particularly in the 60s, from the period, from the latter post-Civil War period of the late 1800s until 1968, lynching was a pretty common way that vigilante, sort of vigilante terrorism um, functioned in parts of America, most commonly, of course, in the South, where you had Jim Crow um, segregation uh, in place. In Jim Crow, in Jim Crow South, African Americans almost, almost totally did not have the right to vote. They were disenfranchised by poll taxes and literacy tests. In, the, in, 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 in much of the country, it's not only in the South, there was uh, segregation. In some cases, that might have been residential segregation. In other cases, and this was most common in the South, of course, there were, um, you know, segregated public institutions, schools, restaurants, so forth. Uh, buses were all segregated. And this created a very fundamental 
inequality between um, between white and black in, uh, in 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 the United States, and this was of course most prevalent in the South. Any time an African American might seek to get registered to vote, um, potentially, and not every single time, but if an African American were to try to mobilize a voting movement in the South, to try to get African Americans registered to vote, they might be faced with significant domestic terrorism. Uh, and sometimes this domestic terrorism took the form of lynching. And lynching, of course, was nothing short of a public murder. Um, lynchings were events that were often observed by dozens, in some cases hundreds of people. They were often, um, they were often indirectly sanctioned by individuals who ran the local police and local government. Lynchings were, of course, uh, it's like an extra, extra ju judicial killing, a killing where a mob of people murders a person that either hasn't been committed of a crime or is not going to be charged of a crime or it's a killing that occurs simply because the status quo in power wants to terrorize a group that they think could threaten their hold on power. And so these murders between the late 1800s and 1968, I think the technical statistic goes from 1882 to 1968, the Tuskegee Institute found that during that period of time, 3,446 African Americans were, were, were lynched, were murdered. So almost 4,000 people were murdered in the United States, most of them occurring in the South, in the United States, in basically extra, extra judicial mob killings that it's been shown were to a large degree indirectly sanctioned by the citizens of many citizens of communities, as well as many of the uh, local government and police in many cases, not every case, of course, but in many cases, they were very public events. And in that respect, were effectively being sanctioned by um, certain elements of the local community. That's the factoid for this week. Send me any questions that you might have um, about the project, about that proposal, and let's have a great week.